I'm Vanjie and thank you for joining me on the channel today. Of course, this is Vanjie's List and today is a really exciting episode. Um, today we're going to be doing our first interview for the channel and it's the series of interviews that I want to do but this is the first one and it's probably going to be my most favorite one. I cannot wait to... Joining me on the channel today, I have the artist known as Kayvon. What's up? <laughs> and we're just going to be doing a series of questions and some things that I think you as fans of his and people that are just getting to know him may want to know about. Okay, so the first question, I'll give you an easy one. We're going to start okay. off with something easy. What is your creative process like? Are you somebody who just goes in the booth and you just kind of freestyle? Do you write? Is it a mix of the two? Yeah, a mixture of everything. Whatever sparks the uh, creative process. Sometimes I write songs right in here. But lately, I've been listening to a lot of different artists. One of my favorite ones, Lana Del Rey. She writes a lot in the car. And I've been trying that and that's been working so yeah that writing writing in the car I write uh, at my house I'll write in a bar if I'm at a bar I'll write wherever okay, so we do talk about um, in the last question a little bit about how you're inspired by Lana Del Rey and how she motivates your process a little bit mm -hmm. um, on the hip-hop side who are three hip-hop artists that you feel motivate you um, in that way as well Number one, everybody knows pretty much as they know me, Kanye West. Uh, two, I'm gonna go with Drake. Three, I'm gonna go with the chorus, the hometown legend, J. Cole. Yeah. Uh, I learned so much from all three of those artists. Um, Kanye taught me pretty much how to be an artist and how to stand with my own opinion, how to come with my own sound. Drake pretty much taught me the whole, you know, I'm a lover boy, I'm, I'm that type of guy, you know what I'm saying, to be comfortable with that and embrace that. And then J. Cole, just the underdog thing and intelligence, to embrace my intelligence, you know, so both of, all three of those artists. There's so many more I can mention. My next question is, I know that you, well, would you consider yourself a new artist? No, since I started at 11 and I'm 25 now, so that's a long time. So I can't really, uh, I, I guess I can, cause I just now, I, I feel like branded myself. I just now find out, found out like who I am, so. Now I know how to express myself to the world, but I've been making music, you know, for years. So yeah, I guess. I guess. Yeah, and then so like, what is your, what so far has been your interaction with your fan base? Like, um, like, are you an artist that speaks to them a lot on Twitter, Instagram, or do you have a back and forth it's, with your fan base? Or are you still establishing that? I am still establishing that. I will say. Recently, I've had to take a social media break, but before then, I was on Instagram a lot. I was meeting people, which was so cool. I was meeting people from the UK, meeting people from Nigeria, like, you know, people that's rocking with it legitly. And yeah, so I mean, yeah, any social media, but now I have to get on it. Like I'm, I'm getting to the point where it's like my mental health. Yes, I gotta handle it, but I can't like lose that connection. Like I felt like I had so much momentum, like especially with my first album release and all that. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, speaking of that first album release, I heard from a little birdie that you got another album coming out soon. Can we get like a release date or? No release date <laughs> <laughs> because I lied before. I had said it was supposed to be released uh, Christmas. Like, you know, I love Christmas, so I, was like, I, can't, you know, I kept telling everybody. Everybody was hyped for it. Like, all my, my fan base, you know, and I didn't do it. I didn't finish it because I just had so many like revelations, kind of like I, I've been going on a spiritual journey and 
all this stuff has happened so I was like I don't want to just make some music that's just like not all the way not all of me you know what I'm saying like I feel like my first album was awesome but it was only parts of me and so now I'm drifting off <laughs> release day <laughs> release day uh basically I, I'm, I'm just when it's done you know I'm a fan of Nikki and I heard her say that she did that with Queen and I feel like that was an amazing product so I'm like okay if one of the goats is doing it like that then that's okay for me you know that's okay for me and I know I'm gonna have to run a bunch of ads I'm gonna have to market the crap out of it but if the product is good enough I feel like I like the people release date when it's ready <laughs> Okay, so with all the labels and everything going out, like if you, once you do start to get a little more mainstream success, like what route are you looking to go? Like, do you want to be signed to a traditional label? Are you trying to do something on your own? Do you just want like a distribution deal? Like, how do you plan on handling the business portion of your career? I want a partnership. I don't, I want... Yeah, probably just a distribution deal. I definitely want to keep my masters, so I'm I'm definitely not looking for a free or anything like that. So, yeah, I plan on building my brand, building my audience. Like I plan to hit a million followers and all that without a label. So by the time I get to a label, they can basically just throw gasoline on the fire. Like, what do you say to people who look at you and are like, okay, but he's working a regular job, you haven't had a concert, you're putting out your second album, you you have a studio in your home, like, what, and to people on the outside looking in who haven't actually listened to your music, but have something to say about you as an artist, like, what do you have to say to those people? Well, that's the first thing, listen to my music. 